Ladies and gentlemen, oh yeah. Sorry. No, no, you go. I messed that's up. Me. Do it again. No, that's me. That's go ahead me. and start your Joe Rogan voice. Here we go. That's my strip, this, this is my strip club voice. Ready? All right, well, there All you right. go. There we go. Ready? <coughs> Ladies and <coughs> gentlemen. God damn. Fuck. Have a drink. Cheers, Joe. Hey, my, hey, my, 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 my way up. My way up. My way up. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Oh, here we go. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I'm your co-host, TMD. We want to thank our main sponsor for the evening. That's going to be Knox Pro, located in Van Nuys, California, A. If you want to know everything Knox Pro, all you got to do is log on to the World Wide Web at www.knoxpro.com. Kizam. Big Keish. <laughs> man, what an ordeal. Oh, you just uh um, Why are you yelling? Conquered. Why are you yelling? Man? I don't know. I'm excited. I don't know. Either the audio is up high. Why are you doing your intro? My damn ears are just blown out, boy. Sorry. I hope I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, I'm feeling like yeah. myself again. Uh, feeling you know, like myself. Okay. I, you know, last few weeks. That sounds like a song, a title of a song or something. We're going to we gonna have to put something like that on, on the record there, Frankie. You know, so what's happening, Joey? Now you tell me. You were the one stranded at an airport for oh, like, what, man. 26 hours? It was crazy, man. I, I was up there. Let me back up. I was in Seattle. Mm -hmm. You know, big shout out to all the family out there, all the fans that came out there. I did an appearance in, uh, over there at Unlock the Con, mm. right there. So it's right there on my social media. You'll see the address, but that's their IG. And then I did a, 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 another... Uh, Appearance there that was with her, uh, Unlock the Con, and it is the Arts of Love, which is like a Polynesian diverse uh, uh, business up there in this beautiful mall wow. up there. It's called a collection, uh, outlet collection mall right there. Just punch it up. And, you know, you, you see some of the uh, footage that they post up. It's been a long time, It's you know, since I've been to an appearance turns into like a festival because I had no idea I was showing up to like a Polynesian festival mm. and it was called a Aloha Fest. Mm. And so I'm thinking I'm coming to a, a pop, Funko Pop store, which it was, you know, Unlocked the Con had a hell of a Funko Pop store. Mm. And, uh, you know, I came there and then part of the appearance was to go outside in the parking lot where they had, a, you know, a Aloha Fest out there uh, by Arts of Love. And it was just a bunch of, you know, Islanders that came together, uh, did something for the community. It was great, man. They uh, they pretty much rolled out the you know, the red carpet for me mm -hmm. and my team. You know, Sarah and uh, and uh, Barry from uh, Unlock the Con, and you know they got a chance to witness how the Polynesian culture, how we do things when we honor, you know, certain celebrities that come through our high chief, or that's just the family culture uh, that we were all brought up. So it was nice to. Uh, to be able to experience that. So big shout out to, you know, to uh, uh, Arts of Love and uh, Unlock the Con. Uh, the, the the fans especially, you know, was fantastic. I mean, they they all came with, they had their lays out there, the VIP that, you know, they put together. Mm -hmm. They had like, you know, Polynesian food in there. It was like a damn 100 degrees, man, out there. But they had a nice tent out there. They was rocking the new Rikishi album. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so everybody was in that vibe, man. That, that you know, just that spread love type of vibe. And good, good food. All the vendors came out. You know, they had different uh, uh, clothing brand vendors that were there. Okay. Uh, different type of barbecue, island food, Filipino food. Mm. I mean, it was all. And uh, they had a uh, runner-up for uh, Miss Samoa. She was there, too, as well. Oh, so nice. It was a... Uh, it was a beautiful appearance this weekend um, until... You got to the airport. Because, yeah. as everybody knows, there was a worldwide outage. Uh, there was a, some kind of a security hack with the Microsoft, and uh, <sighs> banks were affected, flights were affected, and you, of course, were en route from this Aloha Fest. So please tell us, you get to the airport. What? <laughs> Uh, let's start from the beginning. The, please. Got to LAX. You know me. I'm always like three hours early. Oh, that's you know right. What I mean? You were affected on the way there, too. So I get there. Oh, my God. I get up at 8 o'clock. My flight leaves at 11. And by the time I get there, man, it, it was so much going on. People were backed up all the way out the doors. And you can feel the vibe. The vibe was just like, you know, everybody minus the world been locked in a UFC cage. Because they were just so angry, like at, 
you know, the the people working the front desk over there, you know, the agencies. And you know what? I, I wasn't going to let that ruin my day. I got there. Okay, that's why I get to the airport. This is the OGs in me. Mm-hmm. So I get to the airport three hours early. My family said, yeah, you don't have to go that early. No, no, y'all just don't understand. I get there. Now, okay, I see the drama. Now I got three hours to adapt and to see what adapt to scheduling that this airline, which is Delta Airlines. Right. Before you even know it, Jamie, uh, Joey, by, I don't know, 9 o'clock, boom, I get a text notification. Uh-oh. It helps that you download the app that you are <laughs> flying with. Let them do all the work for you. Yes, sir. Rather than having your dumb ass stand in line <laughs> trying to look at a blue screen, hoping that the blue screen comes on when the news just told you that we're having an outage. Oh. So you know that screen ain't going to come on for a minute. So the app, I'll always have the app. You got the notification. Your flight has been canceled. We are now rebooking you. So click the rebook and open still nothing. Go figure. I said, I don't know how the hell they got this information if things done crashed, but they got the information through the app. Something funny going on. So guess what I did? I jumped back, got me an Uber, and I took my ass home. I went home and got back up to the, up to the, you know, the area where I live at in Cali. Mm -hmm. And I just told my wife, hey, she was surprised I came back. See what happened? Ah, let's go grab a bite to eat. Now I can think better. Meantime, I knew I had that app in my hand. Uh-huh. So the agents called me and say, "Man, you know they just canceled your flight." I say, like, "Yeah, you think?" But there's a five thirty flight. You know, first class seats is. You know, I can get you on that because she know, they know that I will not fly any plane without being up front first class. It just ain't worth my time. I love my body too much. The least you can do, the promoter can do, is put a brother up, a who's up front and first class because that's it's part of my contract. That's not even negotiable. Right. So they finally got that. I got there at 5 o'clock, delayed. Uh, delayed till 7 o'clock. Uh. 7 o'clock come, delayed. Uh, 8.30. Now, by this time, I done got me like at least two or three old-fashioned drinks in me. Yeah. Come on. But All I'm right. not hot. I'm not hot because I'm already just, I know how this night's going to go. Mm-hmm. Now I'm already like, okay, let me go ahead and think of uh, a good, uh, truthful uh, post to make because I realize that, you know, you know, the promoters are waiting. The fans are waiting. And for me... You know, I, I'm personal with my fans. I'll try. If I could swim there, I would. If I could drive, I would. But this is something that's out of my hands, and I wanted to make the correct post uh, and an a honest, opinion, uh, honest uh, thought of what's happening, you right, know? Right, now, As I'm sitting there thinking, Joey, you know, this is good when you have old-fashioned because your mind is relaxed. <laughs> I, I, I was watching this movie, man. Which movie? Like the people at the gate just yelling at the... You know, the agents. Oh, I was like it. Yeah, and I was watching other people from, you know, just all kind of diverse people. Mm-hmm. A lady walking by, she trying to run, her damn heel broke <laughs> off her high heels. And I'm like, why are you wearing high heels with sweatpants? You know what I'm saying? So I was just, that movie there, I was watching a reality movie. Uh-huh. And just holding on to my drink and sippy sippy. And, <laughs> and then, boom, the flight came. I said, hey, this last one don't go. Well, I can try, drive back again tomorrow. The parents don't start until this time, but I got to make it happen. So I was going to try all the way till I, there was nothing else. And, you know, God blessed me with the way, and uh, everything so went well. On. And I got there at 1 a.m., wow. started my day at 8 a.m. Mm. on the Friday to get up to Seattle's appearance. Got there at 1 <laughs> I said uh, they wanted to take me out. The promoters wanted to take me out to uh, 13 Coins. You ever heard of that restaurant? No. Oh, man, it's a real popular uh, restaurant. It's, uh, it's a chain restaurant. And I had good. I said, does it have a bar? You know, I knew if I said, yeah. I said, all right. Let's go. You know what I mean? So didn't really eat. It was too late for me to eat. I don't eat, you know, anytime 
when it's late like that, I won't eat anything. It's just, it's not good for me, right? Right, right. So I was happy to get there, Joey. I got in my room at 2.30, 3.30. Man, I just, you know, just lounge. You know, I was already relaxed and everything. The room was beautiful. They put me in some, uh, I forgot the name of the casino, but it was right there in Auburn, Washington. And man, a beautiful, yeah, I'm seeing all, you know, I've seen another, you know, you see the slot machines, you see everybody at oh. three in the morning, they they like, they just woke up, they're full of energy. Uh-huh. And I'm like, ah, oh, man. You gambled a little bit? Uh, no, I didn't. Nah. I, believe it or not, I did. I'm a Buffalo uh, slot, me, a slot machine freak. Okay. I like playing with the penny machine. <laughs> and I ran in, I looked at that. It was right there in the front door, but I surpassed it and I went and uh, enjoyed the room. Nice, beautiful, big room, man. They took care of me. And then, you know, I knew I had to get some rest and get up in the morning by uh, um, by 10 o'clock. You know, it was showtime. And I rocked it. You know, I was kind of tired the first hour or so. But, you know, once I started to, you know, get my little, you know, caffeine in me and so forth. And then when the fans came, they were so, just to see them so excited you know, my my tiredness and just, you know, turned into just full of energy like I drank a case of energy drink, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was a beautiful thing. Saturday started off great. You know, I mean, I, I you can see a lot of it on my social media and Unlock the Cons media and uh, Hearts of Love's media on IG. You know, they did, uh, they just post up everything that we did and it was great, you know. So just to put it all in one, uh, the appearances were great. Now, happy to be there. Day two comes. Yep. We're ready to rock and roll. We go to the Arts of Love store where they have diverse Polynesians. There's, they sell Filipino stuff. They sell Tonkin stuff. They sell Samoan stuff, Fiji, you, you name it, anything South Pacific. And, uh, you know, they uh, they greeted me to Fasabo way. They did what is called ayava. Ayava means like when the uh, family or or of uh, um, the guest of who's there getting ready to return back to their home, uh, they all come and they gift that person. And uh, man, I you know I know I know my peoples, right? And I already knew what to expect was was going to come, you know. And, uh, but my agent, you know, Sarah, um, she was there and uh, she, she filmed some of it, but I can hear her crying on the, on the film while she was videoing. Mm. It's just, she never, she's never experienced uh, something like that. And also the guy that, you know, runs on Lock the Con, Barry, you know, he was tearing up to it. You know, picture this bald head guy, tattoos all over the place. He looks rugged. But he's got tears coming down his eyes, and like you can feel the vibe, the sincere of, yeah. you know, my uh, the high chief that was, uh, you know, um, coordinating the whole event, uh, and so it was beautiful, man. They they even uh, uh, blessed me with you know some of the shuffles and the fine mats that were there, and and it was beautiful. I didn't, you know, I said, oh, my flight don't leave. I was done at two thirty. My flight didn't leave until 8 o'clock. That was my original. Right. So I said, okay. Got a little downtime. Go back to 13 Coins, have another drink. Uh-huh. Get something to eat. I was there for like 4 to 6. And I said, okay. Let me go ahead and just bounce home because the airport was only two minutes away. <laughs> so I get there. <laughs> Let me guess. Go I get there. <laughs> Everything looks good. On time. Yeah, everything looks good. Let me go ahead and just check in my two bags. It should be fun. You go, you know, I don't try to check my bags no more. Me and David, Gang Grill, we do the same thing all the time. Yeah. We'll just take a backpack mm-hmm. and our working gear. That's right. And so that way we have our gear with you. That That's what you make your money off. Mm-hmm. So I just decide, I, let me go ahead and check this thing in. I didn't check my bags on the way up. But because I had all those gifts and stuff, yeah. I had to. So I went ahead and... Here we go. Cancel. Eight o'clock. The flight's been moved to 930. Comes up. Delayed till 10. All of a sudden, boom. Cancel. <laughs> now, the rebook flight, Joey, is at 6 a.m. Oh, wait a minute. So wait, wait. Where are you going to sleep at? Here is it. 6 a.m. Uh-huh. 
So knowing how I am, what time? I know I normally get there three or two hours early. early. Mm-hmm. It is already like close to midnight now, right? You go to try to find hotels for four hours. Everything's sold out. Oh, now, here's no. the thing. The ball drops on Delta Airlines, right? They didn't pay you for the hotel. They're not going to compensate your hotel. Oh, no. no food vouchers. None of that. You, you didn't want to go out and then come back in the, through security. So now all the restaurants and everything closes 11 o'clock. Now I'm thinking, Shit. you know, everything's sold out. Well, I guess, you know, I guess it's the, the, you know, hotel on the floor airport for me. And I was like, okay, four hours. I can just watch a movie. I'll be all right. But I had to get something to eat. So as I'm coming to the, the gate that they say I'm leaving for at six in the morning, I went right across the first first class lounge. And I walked in there, and I, they were just putting away some ribs and mac and cheese. Uh-huh. I don't normally eat mac and cheese, I mean, but damn it, I ate mac and cheese that night. <laughs> I ate like three ribs. It was nice. It was, you know, one of those mm-hmm. things that they were putting away. You know, just yeah. And then I went and I grabbed a glass of ice water. They had these lemon waters there, and I just loaded up three glass of waters, and I just drank it, man. And I was upset because damn it. You know, my container that I forgot my container that I take because I'll usually put ice in there and put mm-hmm. some lemon water from the first class lounge. Mm-hmm. And then I'm always have certain, certain stuff in my backpack. And so I didn't want to carry all that. And I just put it in the damn, with the exception of thinking that my flight and everything's going to be on time. So I leave there and I go to the gate where they say, I get there, Joey, I, all I see is these, just these, light green, loud uh, jackets going back in and out from the gate. As if people that was working at early shift, working at the at the airport for the planes, setting up the planes. And I just sat there, dude. I just sat there. I tried to lay on the floor. You know, keep in mind, I got a lot of injuries and stuff, just aches and pains of the business, you know. My hip is like, you know, burns every now and then when I'm walking too far. And, uh, you know, my knees and my shoulders are out, rotator cuff surgery. So I try to find a warm spot. You know, the rug is the rug at the gates. But keep in mind, can you imagine what's underneath that damn rug? Just filthy, just... uh Jeez. And now, listen, the AC was freaking blowing cold in there. So making your it bones was, hurt. Yeah, well, it was 100 degrees outside. Remember that? Yeah. Doing the luau and all that. So I, I wore one of the new, you know, Hawaiian shirts. Took off the T-shirt that was inside, knowing, thinking I'm just going to jump on a plane. So I took everything out, and now I'm I'm laid there with a thin-ass shirt and trying to be comfortable. Man, I was freezing. I was, I, I was, you know, my mind started flowing. Like, been here, done that for a minute. And this is why I always say never say never, right? Even, even, at, even that no money in the world can make anything comfortable for me to make it happen during the times that certain things are out of our hands. And you got to just do the best. My my positive mindset kicked in, you know? What am I going to do? You know, cry about this, complain about this, and for what? It is what it is. So I just made the best of it, man. I turned around and I downloaded some movies that I had in my Netflix, uh, I mean, on Peacock which is a Yellowstone. I'm a big fan of Kevin Costner. Okay. Yeah, so y'all check that out. Check that episode's out, man. Yeah, all right. So I just chilled, man, and I just made the best of it. Before you know it, 5.50 came around the corner, right? Time to board for a 6.20 flight. Bam. Gate change. <laughs> oh, man, what a rib. Bring it on. Man. At this time, I'm already looking for the next flight. Yeah. Possibly, I told my wife, I might just go to the hotel right now. I might just go to the hotel, start off my day there, take a nice hot shower, get a good meal, you know what I mean? Just stretch out on the bed. And I worry because I, I know I got three days off, but I was going to miss the podcast shooting. Uh-huh. And so here it is, man. I said, all right, we're going to stick it out, man. Gate change. Boom, jumped on there. They said there might be no first class. I said, at this point, I don't care. Just go ahead and put me on there. What happened to my first class seat there? It was too much for them to explain. It's like, 
it, it, like it was irritating to them. <laughs> and I get it. Yeah. They've been explaining, explaining, explaining all night and blah, blah, blah. So at this point, I just wanted to get home. So I get through. Now I'm not even back to the coach seat and I'm looking at the front uh, first class like I'm passing where I should be sitting. Right. Uh-huh. I see like one seat available and I'm passing. Now, before I got to my seat in the back of coach, I had this Samoan lady run in. She must have just got there to work and I realized my last name and came over and boom, and switched my ticket and I was up front. Nice. As soon as I got up front, Joey, it was, uh, I had a direct to LAX, but they had me go to Portland, Oregon. Oh no, you had a layover? (laughs) (laughs) Portland, Oregon. I get to Portland, Oregon. Now I got 45 minutes to make the flight to go to LAX. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Guess what happened? You missed your uh, connecting flight? No. The blind man, the dark glasses came on. Oh, you, oh so then you oh, you made it? Yeah. Come yeah. yeah. on, come on now. <laughs> you got to think. You can't panic. Let it come organic. <laughs> uh, I reached in there, and uh, I was like, <laughs> when I reached in into my backpack, I said, I better have these. And I pulled out, and I looked at the glasses, and in my mind, I said, you're the lifesaver right now, buddy. I'm talking to the glasses. People probably thought I was crazy. Yeah. You're the lifesaver right now. Like, boom, put down glasses. Can't wait. I listen, man, I'm partially blind. <laughs> partially. I need to get to the gate. I've been trying to get to the gate. I'm sure you heard all that, but can you just please help me out? Man, they, she made one call. A cart pulled up. Wham. I was there in a matter of five minutes, man. Got out, and I tipped Jose $20. Mm-hmm. Boom. And then and he tried to leave it. Oh, no, 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 no. Because now I see a full line. I said, what? what? I said, you got to walk me in. I'm partially blind. I might go in the wrong door. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to get on the flight because I know pre-boarders get on early. Uh-huh. I wanted to get on the flight. And that's why I get my seat and what? Have me a cocktail. Yes. Soon as I was on LA, uh, going to LAX bound, I took a selfie, sent it home. I said, I'm on my way home, baby. Man, what a orange. That's deal. my story. And you're sticking with and it. And I'm sticking with it. And hey, here we are. Well, it's always good to see you back here yeah. in uh, the, the hood. And uh, speaking of, of Jose, yeah. we have a Jose on the hold right now. We're going we're gonna to take some calls. Uh, All right on. Jose, please uh, state where you're from in your question. You're on live with Rikishi Fatu. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, I'm, uh, where is Jose? <laughs> Me no sé. <laughs> what happened? He has, to he has to do what? You got to unmute yourself. Unmute himself. Jose, unmute yourself or I'll unmute you for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Go to the next one. Jose will come back. All right. You snooze, you lose. All right. So, you know what? I, I had a question, yeah. Big Keish. Uh, because that is a lot to, uh, man, take on right there. And you did keep a good positive mindset. I saw your uh, your posts and stuff, and you were keeping it uh, positive, which was good, man. But uh, l- l- let's talk about some of your travels. Um, besides this, because this w- does sound like a frustrating experience, what was one of the most craziest travel experiences in your professional wrestling career? Oh, my goodness. Um. <laughs> You've traveled to Kuwait. I mean, or not Kuwait, but like you know, uh, the middle, the Middle East. You've done all all over the world. I mean, well, I mean, the, the craziest is it's um, when you're when like what what happened. You know what I mean? Thank goodness this happened. Not, not to say that the independent personal parents are not important, right? But for something like you got to make these flights and like you're going to a WWE event or a pay per view or Blah, blah, blah. You know, the the craziness is by the power of money, these guys here can easily just send a little jet to get you going to there, right? And then when you get on these little jets, you know, we've heard about, <laughs> you know, a no-no when you put a bunch of wrestlers on these little jets. Yes. Because now you got free all over. You free meals, free drinks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Only a few, only a few, uh, you know, waitresses and so forth, and it's just uh, it's it's, it's free for all on the plane. You know everybody on the plane. And the crazy part is this: if in case, if in case, 
that that turns into like a party on there, which uh-huh. most of the time it does sometimes, uh-huh. depending on <laughs> depending on the crew that's on that flight. You know, it can get real, real crazy. Really? Yeah, like the, it can be a couple couple ribs on there. Damn, if you want to sleep, like. You know, I don't ever sleep like with a bunch of boys on there. Uh-huh. I, I'll close my eyes with dark shades, and if I don't have my glasses, I got one eye open. And because back in the day, the, the ribs would be it's like, well, we, you step out of line or you done something from last tour, mm-hmm. you know, you definitely get your eyes shaved. So, eyebrow uh, shaved. We've heard of Mr. Fuji yeah. and Kurt Henning, of course, being the number one uh, uh, guys doing that. Who, anybody else that would, comes to mind that would pull ribs on, on the road like that? I got to say Owen Hart all the time. I, I mentioned this last week. Owen is just that type of ribber. Like, uh, <laughs> he ribs in a good way. He ri- he ribs in a funny way. Uncle Fuji ribs in a way that can make traveling a real crazy, hard type of rib. For instance, you rent a car, your tires could be sliced. Or inside your gas tank, it can... We have sugar be put in there. Did, did he feed a dog to uh, somebody? Did he feed a... <laughs> yes, <laughs> what? Hey, we, well, you heard this story back in the day, man. Please. I think we mentioned it before. Like, uh, Uncle Dan uh, lost one of his favorite uh, uh, German Shepherd dogs. Right? Oh, some well, of it had the boys, to be a German Shepherd. Hey, some of the boys came over, my uncles included. Uh, but he didn't rip my uncles. Because he, he he knew, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think it was Uncle Alpha and Uncle Sika. I don't know if Haku was there. Jimmy was there. But anyhow, you know, he'd, uh, <laughs> all the boys, you know, if they get a free meal, go back in the day, it's, <laughs> hey, let's do it, you know? So they all gather around and they're sitting on the table, man, and here comes the barbecue, and man, this is great, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And then some of Fuji came out and brought the head out, you know, and then he just started that evil laugh. Ha, 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 ha. You, you just eat Charlie. You just eat Charlie, Charlie. And they'd start throwing up, <laughs> ran outside and throw up. And, of course, Uncle and them didn't need it because he already, you know, gave them heads up about the rib. So, but, you know, these type of things go back. And we're talking about the crazy flights and stuff, travels and stuff. You know, for me, it's, it's overseas and fun with the boys, but not with the boys. Sometimes I'd rather just be alone a different on a different flight where mm-hmm. hopefully nobody knows you and you kind of just have your beanie on your your little me time, you know, your downtime, because it's just crazy to, you know, you think people think traveling all around the world is fun. It, it is fun, but we don't get to enjoy the fun because we're there, you know, on a, on a time. Yeah. You know, the, the time management is just... You got to make these That's where I got flights. that habit from was work, you know. Mm-hmm. I never missed a booking. I never missed a, anything or as far as that had to do with, you know, my commitment as a talent... Uh, to the fans and you know when you go to this beautiful place like I would say the best place for me to travel to Mm -hmm. was Sun City South Africa Google it Sun City South Africa wow and I went to this place here man and I I didn't I I wanted to have my family come back and just have some days off there it was way out in the cut you fly into Johannesburg South Africa you do like a two or three hour drive and we had a show that night, and we just got off the plane, drove there, and that's when the Sultan, you know, wrestled uh, Yoko. And I already, I've been sitting with Yoko in the back. You know, Yoko don't sit up in first class. He has first class treatment, but the seats he would sit would be in the back, and they would rip out, take out a whole aisle, roll the seats in front of his seat. He always liked the way back back seat up against the wall, and then they would take that that one row in front of him. And it's like having a big freaking living room with a big sofa bed back there. So <laughs> we drank 18 hours to get there, drove three hours, find out you know, the Sultan's wrestling in Yoko, and the ribs went on. That was <laughs> that was another crazy, crazy night, you know, and added on to the crazy traveling going there. So it's, uh, you know, making memories when you're traveling with your loved ones and your close friends in the business. Yes, sir. As you and I know, there's a lot of, you know, like David would say, smokes and mirrors. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a few more travel questions before we um, uh, move into uh, some bloodline uh, stuff. But uh, we do have another caller uh, right about now. That's going to be Keisha, a.k.a. Virgo Shaude. Yo, Keisha, state where you're from and your question, please. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you guys? 
Doing oh, great. We, we, we're good now. We're talking to Keisha. <laughs> What's happening, girl? I'm from New Orleans. Hey. And mm-hmm. I have been a huge fan of wrestling, like, my entire life. And to Rakishi, all the flowers to you. All the respect to you. Thank you. I love everything you've done for the industry. I love everything your Thank family you. is doing. So all the, all the flowers to you. Now, thank you, Keisha. You're welcome. Now, with my question, it's like with all the things that the WWE is doing, me personally, I feel like they're not showing all the fellas full potential. Like, Jay, in mm. my eyes, should have been a, a singles champion. Mm-hmm. Come on, girl. But they're not giving it to him yet, and I don't know why. But mm. I have been seeing a lot of things online saying that you might potentially be the new wise man. So with that being said, what are some things that you would do differently with the fellas within the blood? I mean, within the WWE? Well, you know what? It, it, it comes from the, from the head of the corporate table. Um, as far as, uh, you know, I, I posted out on my, my social media about this matter with, uh, I like to call my son, the yeet man. And I mentioned this is no favoritism to him or just anyone, but as wrestlers, as a wrestler that's been there, put in work, and you can see the outpouring of love and support from the fans, whether it be Jay Uso or somebody else. And that was my question, the same thing that you're asking, because I want to know, what is it that uh, this kid uh, uh, has to do? We can see he's probably the hottest the hottest intro when this kid is coming out, the fans, you talk about the fan engagement, you see it. We all see it. But yet when it comes to the time to give this kid his flowers and let's do business, why was it my son handled with uh, uh, money in the bank? Why could he, I mean, where's the guy that uh, that uh, won the money in bank? What is he doing now? Where What, what business sense does that make uh, for a company to let them most exciting guy, uh, a guy that that uh, is not a liability, a guy that shows up and shows out, a guy that does his job. What what, it, what is it? Does it hurt the company to to even give this kid a shot? And so I thought, once the money in the bank didn't go through, I said, well, let's see what they do now. Well, you know, maybe they would give him a shot. There's you know, set him up for I don't know some type of belt, uh, maybe an Intercontinental Champion belt. Maybe that, or if you ask me, I think he deserves a shot to the world championship belt. And, uh, you know, when that didn't happen either, it's like, okay, you know, I'm at this point where I just want to call my son, hey, go ahead and just take a break. Because obviously them writers don't know where to put you or where you can write something that's that's right for the character of Jay Uso, the Yeet Man. And I mentioned this, you know, definitely WWE is making money. Of the Yeet Man, the Yeet Man is making money himself, but the only difference is the Yeet Man is working for his money. WWE, they making, I mean, you, you see it every week. There's a new merchandise of Yeet coming out. This Yeet hoodie, this Yeet foam hand, this thing, this, that, this, and, and, the, and the Yeet Man is out doing personal appearances. I mean, that's when, why? It's not because he have to, but it's because that's the demand of the fans. They want all the characters that they pick, they pick the Yeet Man. And so what I'm saying is there's no, and no mistake, let's make no mistake about it. I am not favoritism this boy, my son, to be able to speak on this. What I'm speaking is about what's happening because this can be any other wrestler. It can be a female wrestler, a guy wrestler, whatever the case, but what is the case? Why are y'all not giving, pulling the, you know, uh, 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 lighting this kid up and just, you know, let him do his thing? And so, but I appreciate everybody, you know, for, you know, when I put out my posts, you know, everybody came through because obviously they, y'all feel the same way I do. And let's just hope, uh, you know, WWE get it together and, uh, uh, you know, do the right thing. And do the right thing they should. Thank you, Keisha, very much for calling in from New Orleans, man. That's right. That's that's awesome. Seeing off the top is reaching out all, all over the world. 
Yeah. You know, people I, are listening. And it's good to hear, like, the fans are listening. And, uh, you know, it's for me, it's, it's concern. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, at the end of the day, these are bodies. This is my flesh and blood. My flesh and blood that's pounding his body day in, day out. I don't see when I see him. I see him, you know, he has a family, comes home and just, you know, aching. And, you know what I mean? His body's hurting, but he, he'll never sell it. He'll never sell it because he's not trained that way. He's not trained to quit. He's not trained. To, he's, he's trained with responsibility. You know, you sign that dotted line and that dotted line. I'm not talking about the contract. I'm talking about the dotted line for you and yours. That. That's bigger than what the purpose is for a contract with WWE. We already know. The kid is so good. WWE ain't the only spot. He can probably go to AEW if he wanted to write his own ticket. Maybe more is what WWE is making on him. So, you know, at the end of the day, man, this is this is a wrestler talking. You know, I, I, I utilize my platform to each one teach one. But it just so happened that we talking about my my boy, the Yeet Man. So let's hope, you know, hopefully uh, they turn it around and, and do the right thing behind the Yeet Man. Can we get a Yeet? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big Keish, I had a few more uh, travel questions for you. Yo. Who, who are... Uh, some of your favorite travel partners, whether it be in the air or on the road, who are some of your favorite partners from uh, throughout your career uh, that you would travel with? Oh, man, I used to love traveling. With, uh, uh, when I, most of the time, it was always Yoko Fuji. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, Big Sam, my partner. Um, and then, you know, there was another group would be the BSK group. You wow. know, it would be Godfather, you know, Savio Vega. I like to travel with BSK because then I didn't have to drive. You know, when I'm traveling with family, you know, I got Yoko who, you know, has sleep apnea. He'll sleep in 30 seconds when he sits up front. And then oh, you have no. Fuji in the back with medication. He'll sleep in, you know, before Yoko. And so I'm just driving by myself in that, in that Cadillac, you know. And then, but when I'm with Taker and, uh, you know, Godfather, Savio, maybe Hoggy sometimes, most of the time, and Phineas is off someplace running around the arenas naked. <laughs> I don't know where the hell he's at. But yeah, it. it uh, what a crew! The that big... crew. I, I had three different, and then uh, you know the girls: uh, Dom uh Nydia. You know, uh, we'd have uh, Ray Mysterio. Wow, you know, that'll be our crew. And uh, you know, of course, Ray liked to drive a lot, so I would go to places when I don't feel like driving. You know what I mean? Okay. But then whatever the crew, because not the same crew is always there all the time. Right. You know, but, you know, for sure, us and Godfather, Yoko was always around, so. So you did have to travel a few times with someone you necessarily didn't care to travel with? Uh, yeah, who, sometimes. Who is someone that comes to mind right away that you just, man, ah, oh, I got to, ah, oh, come damn it, I got to travel with this person today? Well, especially those that we call car jumpers. Car jumpers is those that call you, hey, Keith, can I get a ride, uh, you know, to the town? Yeah, all right. So, you know, then you get another. Keith, can I, I won't drop no names, but Keith, can, I'll just label it car jumpers. Okay. The OGs, everybody knows that. And then, hey, Keith, can I get a So now by the time three, four people call, the one, you know, the, the one full-size car that I was going to get a Ford Taurus, uh-huh. you know, now I got to get a damn minivan and so forth. <laughs> So I get the minivan, and you get there to get to the town. They say, oh, I'm, I'm jumping with who and who. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to jump in with who and who. And now you got this big-ass minivan. It's only like you and the one passenger, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, these type of things here, like whenever that, when I experience that, uh, I, I've learned to say no. You know, I, I'll just say, hey, no, I got, I got a, I'm going to see family members or whatever the case. And then I'll just stick to a Ford Taurus or a Chevrolet Impala. Uh, back in the day, I would never rent a, a minivan. Now, the only time I would upgrade mm-hmm. with stuff like that was when I ride with Taker. You know, of course, those cats, they had to get that big Caddy DeVille. You know, it was like back in the day, it was $150 a, a day. Wow. Uh, wow. A day. Yeah. My, my Taurus was like $23 a day. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, Yoko, when you would rent those big cars like that. Mm-hmm. So, I didn't mind, you know, jumping, you know, drive and stuff because I knew. No, those those were big ballers back in the day, big ballers. That's wild, all you BSK guys together. I'm wondering what music would you guys all have find as a common ground? It has to be country. I'm just going to shoot this out there. I'm just going to assume. 
What? All you guys together, Taker, uh, Godfather, you, yeah. uh, Savio Vega, uh, I'm sure Yoko. Yeah. Uh, man, I'm sure there's some, the common ground between all you guys had to be country. Was it, was that the, the or, or no, or well, hip hop? No, no I, it, it was very simple to answer your question. What is it? It was everything. We learned to love country. We learned to love hip hop together. Uh huh. Right, uh, those type of music they would take her and uh, Paul Bear, uh -huh. you know, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Henry Godwin, you know, they would teach us, you know, like what's hot, the famous guy in country, Waylon Jenny. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, um, uh, and a few other names I can't even remember now. But and then we would turn them on to the West Coast as me and Godless, Godfather. Yo, we from the West Coast. Uh huh. You know, Godfather's up there in Nevada, but he was you know, out there from San Jose. Right, the Bay Area. So he mm -hmm. never. But you know, I would flip out because you know they would play country music on, and, and all of a sudden this big bald head black dude just starts singing the words, <laughs> country music, <laughs> Waylon Jenny and Hank Hank William Jr. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? All yeah. this stuff. Um, you know, Nolan Jenny, Jenny's was uh, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, John Anderson. I'm just, you know, Randy wow. Travis. You know what I mean? And and Godfather was saying these words. I'm like, how do you, you learn all these words? So come to find out, you know, it's, it's no, it's no uh, secret that Godfather was with Taker in Memphis, Tennessee mm -hmm. back in the day. So that's that relationship goes way back. So I, I put two and two together. Now now I know why his ass, he knows the, the country music. It was yeah. funny as hell. But then when it came to Snoop Dogg and all hip-hop, he knew that too. You know, Yoko was right up with it. But Yoko was funny. When we all traveled, you know, they, the guys would come and couldn't wait to put in a new cassette deck. Uh -huh. Like, we got, you know, Snoop, we got Ice Cubes, you know, America's Most Wanted. You know, they'll come in with, you know, Hank Williams Jr.'s Greatest Hits. So Yoko let it play, play for a minute, because he's the only one sitting up front. Uh-huh. Right? And we're driving on that. He'll just roll down the window, and he'll pop the eject once he gets out and throw that brand new <laughs> cassette out the window. <laughs> and then he'll put in his recording music. <laughs> so he put his playlist on a cassette, uh -huh. and then he would just jam that. Right? Yeah, yeah. And nobody would say, oh, man, you threw my new cassette out. You know what I mean? <laughs> what are they going to say? Everybody just laugh. We just all laugh, man. Wow. You know? And so that's how I really got a chance to, uh, me personally, to learn about poetry of country music. Okay. You know? And, and my love for hip-hop is no mm. secret. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a fan of hip-hop, of telling good poetry, because you can take something away from that artist of what that artist is going through or what he's trying to explain uh, in his lyrics. And I've learned that uh, by listening, you know, to some of the country music. Mm -hmm. It's the same way, but it's kind of different as far as beats. You know what I mean? And I, I feel like, you know, country singers are poetry. They're rappers too. Yes, but they of course. Just of course. rap in a different type of vibe. You know All I mean? my exes live in Texas. Exactly. Like the, the right there. <laughs> There it is. They just, they, they see now country music, they just tell everything. Yes, sir. They, they tell everything, boy. I so I want to know uh, did you ever influence Undertaker to listen to hip hop? Like, did, did he pick up any hip hop from you guys? Nah, he take it, you know, he would, what was that? Uh, man, it was that, uh, <laughs> We, we used to listen to Ice Cube a lot, but okay. it was mostly Snoop Dogg, though. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I think it was more for Taker. Mm -hmm. I think it was more so the beat. Like, he couldn't remember all what, I, I couldn't, I, I didn't understand what Snoop was saying. Mm -hmm. He, uh, one, two, the three, to the four, to the, I was like, what is he talking about? What, he's counting what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because <laughs> his voice. Yeah. Right. But once you get deep into his what he's talking about, mm -hmm. it came to me, man. He's explaining about what, you know, where he's from, the hood and mm -hmm. what goes on and the club and all this stuff. And yeah, so Taker would just uh, I think he would just listen to it sometimes because Yoko wanted to have on a song and he would just not at the beats, you know, the beats. Okay. But he, I don't think he could take Never it. Never fully embrace. I, I just think he could he just yeah. couldn't really find, like, you know. That's cool. Hey, man, everyone uh, marches yeah. to the beat of their own drum. But, and, but yeah, uh, you see, Mark, though, you see those photos, man. Yeah. And Mark will throw on a beanie sometimes with them dark shades. Yeah, that's why I had to ask. He'll, he'll throw up the west side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Man, so, he's got the, the BSK uh, tattoo. Hey, that's hey. gangster.
Don't let that albino fool you, man. Don't let that albino fool you. He's straight thug it too, man. Just country thug. Thug it and bug it. That's it. Country thug. Hey, know? so uh, we got another caller. Um, All right, wrapping come on up with on the on the uh, travel talks. Uh, we got a uh, Jose calling back again. Jose, state where you're from and your question. You are on live with Off the Tom with Rikishi. Fatu. Hi, I'm from uh, Los Angeles, and hi, Rikishi. How you doing, Jose? You got it? Um, I have a question. Uh, like, I've been a huge fan of you ever since I've been a kid. And um, how do you think about uh, Jey Uso's career and how the WWE can, uh, like, put him into the role of being a world heavyweight champion? Uh, yeah, man, uh, j just kind of, uh, I, you know what, the long story short, uh, I feel that, you know, the fans know what's happening as far as, you know, where uh, they're putting a the Yeet Man, you know, what the plans are WWE has for a Yeet Man, which by the looks of it, uh, I feel the Yeet Man is getting this all organically. Uh, this popularity is all organically. You know, he's got that, he's got that vibes, he's got the swag, and it's just the WWE universe loves the Yeet Man. And when it comes to putting together the Yeet Man in the right position as opportunities, like there's no, there's no reason why the Yeet Man couldn't have won the money in the bank. There's no reason why the Yeet Man could not have an opportunity to be a main player at uh at uh, uh in a continental belt or just a world championship belt uh i feel that the yeet man is being put in a certain position uh, uh for whatever reason is it doesn't make sense to me and uh you know honestly i told my boy just take a break because if you can't figure this kid in where he needs to be why have him on the show you're not there he's not there to be an enhancement talent for a talent that's trying to enhance popularity. The Yeet Man has already got the popularity. So if we're talking business, okay, WWE can do their business, but at the same time, you know, we're self-employed. The Yeet Man is self-employed. So meaning, like if you ask the father, I would say Rikishi would take care of the Rikishi brand, do what's best for Rikishi brand. And so at the end of the day, I want to personally thank you guys, the fans, the WWE Universe, again, Jose, for thank you for rocking with my boy. Thank you for rocking with, uh, you know, Yeet Man for every single one of you guys repost, retweet. Your voices are being seen and heard. So at the same time, I don't write the books up there. I'm not the guy that write the storylines, but you can rest assured, if in case... If in case Big Keish is to come back, you can rest assured that that my voice, my opinion, my suggestion will definitely matter as far as for the bloodline and the dynasty, especially for the Aina. There should be no question of can we and will we do business. My goodness, we've been there for 75 plus years. I think we should have surpassed all those thoughts that are waiting. So it has to be, in my mind, the newbies that are there at our so-called office. They're green. They're just coming out of college. You know, they're, they're, you know, they don't understand how the business works or how a character works or how this person works. You got to look from the inside out. If I was an agent that was writing this thing here, I would, you know, write accordingly. Once does it make sense? Does it make business sense? Because the money, uh, WWE is all about money. It's all about, you know, revenue. It's all about drawing houses. So you want to put your first players up front in that, in that circle. And I feel the Yeet Man is amongst the five up in that first five. Now you can take it. I'm, um, I got an eagle for my son. I, whatever the case, call it what you want it. At the end of the day, this is a father on the sideline supporting what I feel should be right to give Yeet Man his flowers and opportunity. Thank you, guys. There it is. 
man, couldn't have said it better. Uh, man, coming straight from the horse's mouth right there, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, listen, uh, Big Keith, before we wrap it up, man, let's uh, talk a little bit about the bloodline. Uh, this uh, past uh, week on SmackDown, the bloodline 2.0 is continuing their dominance. First, they took out Randy Orton. Now they took out Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens in uh, the same episode. So at this point, I, I got to ask you, who can defeat the Bloodline 2.0 right about now? Who is in contention? In, in my opinion, I would say nobody. Um, who, who, who is there anybody out there right now who could even uh, come close to defeating the Bloodline 2.0 because they're running rampant, and at this point, there's like no signs of, of slowing down anytime soon. You know, I'm going to go off the cuff here, and I, I'd have to have a, a team like DX put together. Triple H, X-Pac, Road Dog, maybe Billy Gunn, Shawn Michaels. These cats here because the, the, the history of the bloodline and the new history of the Bloodline 2.0 all fall, falls underneath the umbrella of the Samoan dynasty. Legacy. And just the, that alone, the title alone, you put them with, you got to, like I mentioned about Jacob, you got to put these guys with the right people to get the best out of them. And I'm knocking Cody Rose, not knocking Randy and, and Owens. I get it. You know, they're leading up to August the 3rd, SummerSlam. You know, we need something. You know, the, the GOAT's not here. Roman's not here yet. yet. Right? So who do we got? And so once again, you lean on to make a good baby face, you got to have the good heels. Here comes what? Here comes the bloodline. Yep. You know, so, you know, they're, they're doing a good job, but just there's something missing Cody, Randy Orton, and Owens against this bloodline here, bloodline 2.0. I I get it. These these three guys, the baby face, are big superstars, and that's they're a list right now, you know. And uh, we need to, you know, book it right. We need to, you know, kind of take care of this bloodline 2.0. Because we all know what we're waiting for. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for the original bloodlines to come back, form the bloodline, and then they would not come back and go up against Randy Orton and blah, blah, blah. No. Right? It's going to be each other. Which it'd have to be each other. Let me ask you this, Big Keish. That's the inevitable. We all know that's going to happen. And we don't even know all the players. There's still new players to add to that mix. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this even further. So we all know it, they're going to collide. But what if, what if the entire bloodline joined and linked up together as one, like the NWO? Um, who the hell is going to stop the bloodline? This will never stop because nobody, and we, you've said it, please step up. We're begging people to step up. If, if you're tired of it, well, step up, people. Who, who, like you said, you would, it would be like a DX. So you mean like OGs or do you mean like a new breed of, of DX type wrestlers? Because there's a lot of misfits out there. Uh, Braun Breaker, uh, he's like one of the first that would come to mind. Maybe him and a group of ragtag misfits, uh, uh, linking up. Uh, maybe some, uh, NXT guys. Uh, that could be some really cool stuff there. But who, right off the top of your head, would be able to even take on, imagine all of them under one roof, one bloodline. Yeah, I mean it's a possibility. You know, I, I uh, at the end of the day, it's the, you know, that's that's fresh. You know, the whole everybody's waiting uh, that this bloodline comes back. People are already calling it without even writing it. Bloodline 2.0 versus bloodline. That's already people thinking about it, and right. But what a swerve that would be, as when the bloodline comes. Finally, the blow off is about ready to happen. The first time they meet, you know, this crew here, this crew here, this everybody together, they're about ready to tear into each other. And all of a sudden, they all turn left and raise up to ones. <laughs> that's, that's dope. Yeah. Then I'd feel this is where I almost feel that promo, which is not a promo. 
back in the day that comes out when I turn babyface. I mean, heel. Great white hype promo. You held us down. Now we point. Here's Jeet. You held me down. Here's Jay. I mean, Jimmy. Since you've been gone here, you get one fan letter? No. I mean, really take it down the line, dude. Really take it. Now, since y'all don't give a damn about us, we gonna really show you who runs this. And everybody and everybody, from the top talent to the bottom talent, everybody gets crushed. Until what? Until you see new faces that nobody has ever seen in the ring step up, right? When these new faces, a group that is verified from the powers that be, it needs to show some type of promo that the powers that be are endorsing this new talent because the world has no idea or who these people are, nor did they ever seen them wrestle before, has no reputation, no brand whatsoever. But once they write and they see how this thing is going amongst this crew versus the bloodline, now you give the fans something new. Like, for instance, uh, uh, Braun, right? You see how fast he caught on fire. So, in a way, people are tired of seeing the same old baby faces, especially the ones that are just there to, you know, your time has come to pass the torch, my friend, or my chick. Yeah. You know what I mean? I get it. Don't hold on. You hold on to that spot so long is because, you know, you're probably living within your, without your means, and you can't let that paycheck go because... You know, you got that mansion, you got that, you know, Bugatti, you got that diamond earrings, you got this and that. And, you know, but had you been trained like the dynasty from the get go, we understand all that's materialistic. We live within our means. The, 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 the material stuff doesn't describe who we are. It's our work ethic. Sir. And that's what you see now. So if you ask me, you know, it's going to need something new, some fresh minds that are writing this shit to, you know, to, you got to think like the fans. What would the fans want to see? Then when you get there, now you put your professional mind together because wrestling is full of twist. You don't deliver what the fans are calling. You make it seem like it's going to happen. And then, boom, I'll see you at WrestleMania. That's when you deliver why? Because the story is ended and everybody makes that big paycheck then and there. And so I'm always thinking business. I think fans, but then I think, okay, what is best for the company? Because that's what, that's what the powers of be, you know, should be thinking, which they are. Mm -hmm. And the only time I feel when I see somebody else putting weight on somebody that should be going to the next level, it's either two things, either that, you know, you got heat or they're not, they're, somebody don't have the balls enough to come tell you, you know? I, I mean, I'm, again, you know, I bring this back up because it's happening to my boy. And it's okay for him to just say, you know what? Let me just go ahead and take a rest, you know? He, when, when any of my boys take a rest, any family members take a rest, we all good, man. We are all good. I'm going to just throw that out there to mm -hmm. any wrestling company out there. Mm -hmm. When you've been grinding for 75 plus years, you, you, you rest assured we good, right? We good mentally. We good as far as, you know, your work ethic. We good as, as far as business wise. We good all the way around because this circle, that's what we do. We keep it tight that way. But we're not, you know, we're not just going to lay around for you to, you know, put a bullet in the back of my head and just shoot me like you got what you want. Now I'm done. Nah. We never die, man. We yes, just sir. get we just getting started. We never die, just multiply. Come on. Like like I, the Ice T song Colors. <laughs> okay, if you say so. <laughs> I, 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 I said it, that's not it. That's how we do it. <laughs> and uh, I, I, gotta, think I, 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 I got uh, a few more questions. Joey's just switching up my 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 liners, my closers. 
<laughs> I, I got a few more questions yeah. for you before we wrap up. Uh, the rumors and the ballyhoo, the mm. scallywag going around town yep. is the newest bloodline member to sign the dotted line is going to be Haku's third son, Hiku Leo. What do you know about Hiku Leo? I, I don't. I just know he's seven foot tall. You know, I, I've never met this kid before. But, uh, you know, come from Haku's bloodline, we already know. That's not to be questioned. You know, uh, it's a good opportunity. I'm glad they're, you know, it makes me happy, you know, to see our people coming through, getting that opportunity to give them their flowers. You know, a lot of, you can imagine other wrestlers. Mm. They come into WWE or AW, they got to start from the bottom. Now they see bloodline, any family member come, we write in the main event. Well, guess what? We didn't just start from the bottom yesterday. Let me let me give you a mm. fact. 75 plus years we've been at it. Yep. You know it? And it ain't no push like what we got today. And so if you ask me, they earned it. Every single person that's in the bloodline, they earned it. Now the 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 hard part is is staying in it. Because there's so many other family members like Journey Fatu, Zilla Fatu that's out on the Indies. In the wings, you waiting. know what I mean. And there's there's other kids that mm. you know that we don't even know about it. That's probably you know connected to Haku or connected to un Uncle Jimmy. Let's mm. not forget about Uncle Jimmy Snooker. Let's not forget about you know the Johnsons, uh, the Maivias. Mm. You know, there's just so many, and that's that's not even we ain't even talk about tapped onto the 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 female dynasties of this family. You know, Tamina, Naya, Trinity. I mean, the, the list goes on, Ava, right? And there are just more that, you know, can possibly come through. The Tongan twins that are out there. there there's just so many. You know, Lady Tapa, another Tongan that's related to Haku. She's a female. So, yeah, I'm happy to see our people rise to the top, man. Let's see how y'all feel, uh, what it feels like. What does it feel like to see others on top? Yeah. You look yourself in the mirror and you can answer that yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah, because I tell you what, we we on top and it's going to be a minute before we hit the bottom. Absolutely. You can take that to the bank. Got two more questions for you, Big Keish. Uh, one question. Do you believe in Joe Hendry? Uh <laughs> Obviously, I guess you've been watching the viral that goes all over. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the, the guy's funny. He, he, okay. He, he did something right. He's he's going all viral because I had no idea who the hell he was mm -hmm. until, you know, you guys sent me the post of this guy here and, mm -hmm. you know, the team. So, you know, I, I'm not a believer. I, I believe he, he struck the right wherever to be all of a sudden viral from a, somebody that, you know, not really wrestling, wrestling royalty, you know, but the the cat must be a marketing genius, you know, and who knows? He can be, you know, think like WWE. Uh, he stays that. I, I, I can possibly see him somewhere, a skit or something in WrestleMania, you know, and that's just to be able to, you know, give him an opportunity, capitalize off his, you know, media viral being, you know, viral all over. But then, you know, hopefully he will think about, you know, I'm giving this up getting this opportunity of being WrestleMania. It, it wasn't through his work, but it was through popularity, you know, at this t time and age. Now, this is the, this is the opportunities that us as wrestlers, what I always teach you guys, you never know when that opportunity is going to come. But since they're giving me an opportunity was for that, but I'm going to take the opportunity and show them that I can do this. That's when, you know, hopefully he gets in and really sink his head, take time to get trained, you know, maybe stop by Booker T, uh, Booker T school because you can also get trained in wrestling, but also get trained mentally, business-wise, inside and out the ring of professional wrestling. Not marketing, not all that other stuff he's been doing, but professional wrestling. Then come here, stop by, you, you know, uh, by Knox Pro at our academy here, and then let us give you a little of our insights. Now you got two different vibes. Right. And then it's up to you. Like you get in there and you hone in on what we just uh, talked to you about, something that you probably didn't understand and couldn't see it. But now you do because you took time to go visit Booker T School in Houston 
Knox Pro, us here in Los Angeles, now you have a different look on it, outlook on it. And he can make it or break it. Because mm. at the end of the day, he's going to get a paycheck anyway. But longevity-wise, that opportunity might come once and he needs to capitalize on it. So good luck to the hoose. You know, I, I hope that uh, he makes the right move, makes the right decisions, and, uh, you know, really look longevity to be able to... Uh, that's if you love professional wrestling. If you really, really love it and have passion, pursue it. But if you just have to a paycheck... All right, well, just keep doing what makes you viral. Yes, sir. And there it is. Got one more question for you. Do you have any final words, Big Keish? You know what? I want to thank everybody for always tuning in. Uh, truly, truly, and uh, humbly, and uh, appreciate, you know, you guys' time, uh, 45 minutes or to an hour sometimes for tuning in. And uh, I always remember it's... Uh, you know, uh, I appreciate it. And my whole staff appreciates it. Uh, thank you to you, Joey. Thank you to Frank, Michael, uh, David, you know, my man Ely that's uh, behind the scenes on the ones and twos and the computer keys. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you to the whole, all the fans that support and ride with, uh, you know, Off the Top, Rikishi Off the Top uh, podcast. And, hey, we'll continue to keep bringing it to y'all. You know, we are working hard here to be able to, you know, have fans call in on the screen TV here. Uh, we've uh, just, you know, kind of mastered the call-ins. I think it's a great opportunity uh, for fans to be able to talk, you know, like we're talking, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. They're in their living room. We're in our living room here doing our thing. And as a fan, I think that's cool uh, that we're able to make the connection, technical, you know, connections to, to the fans worldwide. And now we're, we're working to where you can actually see us and we see you through screen and just have some type of, you know, friendly conversation, you know, uh, try to answer the best we can as far as in the wrestling world. I mean, no holds barred. You know me, you know, my tongue don't stop. You know, my mouth just, you know, it goes where my mind goes and that's all I know how to do. There's no, uh, there's no script. There's no nothing. You know, you ask a question, I'm going to tell you like it is. At the end of the day, you got what, uh, what you were, uh, hoping that I was going to say, or maybe you got what you didn't think I was going to say. But at the end of the day, you're going to get it from me. So thank y'all for rocking with us, and uh, we'll tune in next week. And remember, it's free to be kind to one another. And always, always smarten up.